Uh, this first um, criterion is student engagement and community building. And this is the educational foundations course, which is part of this particular course is part of a learning community with English 200. But the same uh, navigational tools and assignments are found whether you're a face to face or a distance learning person. The way we uh, address uh, building community online is getting the students to interact with each other by teaching uh, lessons to each other. And this innovation is something that anybody can do and consider uh, because it requires them to uh, go out and pick a topic of their choosing uh, that's meaningful and relevant to them and then research it and then present it in front of other students who have to uh, go through the lesson and then the student has to then reflect whether they learn. So the way we get started in that is uh, we do it through forums and we have them sign up for a focusing activity and of course we have a demo by the teacher to make sure that they know what to do. But if we take a look at one of the first focusing activities that they would present, these students here decided, one of them decided to present a lesson on bullying, one of them decided to present a lesson on poverty and education, and the other one on racism and support. What makes it so valuable is that they really want to get across these ideas. And if we take a look at one of the lessons, you'll see that these students participated. This is a smaller class because it's a writing intensive English 200. But normally you would have uh, at least 20 to 30 students per, um, uh, per lesson. So if we take a look real quick at uh, how Daphne presented this, she just basically threw out a couple of uh, instructions for them to do. They did it, but here's the important part on the, on the building is that they start talking about how the lesson was and giving feedback on the lesson and which starts a dialogue that uh, students can then interact and build their community. So that's a great innovation uh, for you to start off and build community. This um, section is addressing criterion number two, communication. And I believe that effective teaching uh, involves providing and communicating as many opportunities or avenues for students to access the information and then have an opportunity to present their understanding of it. So I want to show you how this course uh, sets up communication to give and provide students just that opportunity. So if we take a look at um, this first thing up here, a lot of times that we list due dates in our gradebook and assessments and syllabus but students also need an opportunity to see everything in one nice handy dandy sheet. And this is not to be in place of gradebook or anything like that, but if we take a little closer look at this, what this allows the student to do is keep track of their assignments as they go. And again, this is not substituting for gradebook, but it gives them just something to put when they come to class or online, uh, whatever way to keep progress, but it also lets them know if they're in current in terms of dropping the, the, the grades or uh, keeping up with where they should be. So for example, on the last day, they should check to see if their grade is correct in La Lima and so on. And so this allows them to know exactly what's due and what's expected. But if we go to a module, let's see how this is communicated in terms of what they should do on the due dates. So if we take a little less smaller look, uh, we're going to scroll right down. We're going to discuss this part in a minute. But if we scroll down and we look at one of the first assignments under autobiographical sketch, which is uh, them introducing themselves to a principal, uh, what they get is a clear introduction. They have three opportunities to decide how they want to learn about it. They can read if they're an auditor, I mean, if visual person. But they can also have something, and this is a nice innovation that I just came up with, is actually looking at an example with the instructions embedded into the example. What this allows students to do is get kind of a quick start view of what the instruction looks like and then have a clear idea of what a final product is going to look like. Then, if they want to just listen to me go through it, they can click on an instructor video in which I will talk about and talk them through the assignment. And in this way, they have an excellent opportunity to know exactly what's expected. And then they have the instructions. Then they also have a clear rubric and an example in which they can also see what's uh, expected of them. Each assignment is like this. And then we provide feedback throughout for them to improve those assignments.
This section addresses criterion number three, learning materials and strategies. And basically, this is how the course is set up so that students are able to uh, navigate clearly through the course and be able to um, uh, are provided opportunities in, and strategies in which they are able to uh, learn the material in an engaging way. So I'm lucky to have a few colleagues who have developed a consistent course structure for all the education courses, so I don't really have to worry about too much about navigation because it's shown to be consistent amongst all the education courses and I rarely get questions about it. So we have these lovely tools on the left that uh, have been developed by those folks. And they've also developed um, the module system. So if we take a look at the first module, uh, every module has a clear question, an overarching question of what's going on. The objectives of each module are um, developed so that they're very clear in terms of their action verbs and what's expected. So for example, at the end of this module, they really will be able to describe their personal desires and characteristics related to the teaching profession. And then we try to come up with a few big ideas in which they can focus. So who are they as an educator? What are the teaching standards for educators in Hawaii? And what is the purpose of education? And what dispositions do they need to have as an educator? And then below that is a course calendar taking them through step by step of what they need to do for each week in the online course. This is also used in face-to-face -face as a supplement so that both students have full access to the resources. And if we go to, again, to the autobiographical sketch, uh, we have a clear introduction, we have clear instructions, and what the innovation of this is, and actually I need to go back real quick to the professional development plan. Let me jump right there. What the innovation for this is, is that they have the opportunity to look at resources that they want to use to help them answer it. And so there is no set set of resources. They can use their text, web, or, um, or their own personal experiences to answer the question. So this gives them an opportunity to dig down really deep and to be a, a, a constructivist rather than a passive learner. This section addresses criterion number four, learning outcomes and assessment. And one of the most important things that for any course is to have clear and meaningful course learning outcomes uh, so that the students know exactly what um, they are supposed to do and you know exactly what they're supposed to do. And in the education uh, department in the AT program, we're informed by the Hawaii Teachers Standards Board uh, as what we should teach uh, for getting teachers ready for the classroom. And so this course covers uh, about six standards, standard nine, standard 10, two, six, seven, and eight. And to make sure that I'm covering those, I develop course learning outcomes that um, provide evidence of those standards. And then course assessments that are specifically designed to show evidence of those learning outcomes. And then there's a point total uh, that students um, can see how much it's worth. And rubrics are designed for each of the assessments um, so that they know exactly what their score is based upon. And finally, there is uh, opportunities to improve any assignment until it reaches the, the grade that they wish to earn. One thing that is innovative here is, and this is very important, is to separate your academic grade from your behavioral grade. And so if you look here, these are all academic grades. But 20% is based upon whether they can turn their assignments on time and whether they attend class and if they have positive dispositions. Since it's impossible to get attendance necessarily on online courses, what we do instead is how much they participate in the uh, forums. And so the teaching activity that is required each week is designed to show exactly their attendance. And this is important because in standards base, if you uh, lower grades by half because it's late, then it no longer tells you whether that um, course assessment or course learning outcome really was met or not. Uh, 
Uh, this section uh, addresses criteria number five, learner support. And it's really important in any course that you provide numerous opportunities for students to be successful. And that means you also have to be part of a learning community that you need to bring in your media specialist, your technology speci specialist, your counseling specialist to give them every opportunity, your students, every opportunity to be um, successful for whatever challenge that's coming up for them. So personally in this class, I make sure that I give them opportunities to improve their work by giving them very specific feedback and telling me exactly what they need to do. So for example, this student here turned in their case study uh, assignment and they can return it in for the 20 more points if they so desire. This has turned out, in my experience, not to be overwhelming for me because um, students that are really um, desiring an A uh, usually will do the work and the students that just want to get by usually will not do the work. So it doesn't overwhelm you as a, as a person. Uh, in addition, everything that a student needs is available and so that they can go at their own pace. And one thing that was not mentioned was that the modules are connected exactly to the learning outcomes. So if they complete these six modules, they've completed the course learning outcomes. And that's a nice um, clear uh, alignment to have. Then finally, if any time that somebody is very struggling, uh, we have a support network. And part of that support network is the normal La Lima computer support, but also we provide peer mentors. And what I would suggest as an innovation is anybody who's seeking out um, ways in which to help students is to grab students in your class and make them available for other students and have some sort of systematic way for them to talk. And so we've had the opportunity to work with the counseling and uh, department to create something called My Leeward, which is basically um, a peer mentor site in which we can go and raise a flag about a student and have them actually work with those peer mentors to finish a product. So for example, if we look at this student, this is one I referred recently, and if I look at my notes, I can see that I referred this student um, about a month ago and that this person has now met with one of our peer mentors and, and put in the actual uh, notes. And when this student has completed the assignment, I will resolve it and this will show up as a completion and an improvement in her grade, which is the whole point. So there's lots of ways to connect to students and provide them opportunities.